5.3, proving triangle congruence by side angle side. We'll shorthand that to SAS, -S, side angle side. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So what this is trying to say is, what is the minimum amount of information that you need to know about two triangles in order to say that they're the same, to say that they're congruent? So take a look at these two triangles. So between these two triangles, we know one angle corresponds, angle A corresponds to angle D, and I know that the two side lengths correspond. So AB corresponds to DE, and AC corresponds to DF. Now, do I need to know about the other two angles or the third side? Right now, I know nothing. I don't know if EF is congruent to BC, and I don't know if angle E and F correspond to B and C. But what we're here to tell you today is that this is the A minimum, this is just one example, of a minimum amount of information that you would need to know in order to say that these two triangles are congruent. So if you know two sides and an angle that's between them, then you know that those two triangles are congruent. It's by some, what we call side angle side. What I like to do is I like to label it with S's and A's. So I would say that this is the side, this is my angle, and this is my side. So no matter what direction you go around the triangle, it's in that order, S-A-S. -S. And it does matter what order they come at you in. So if you go counterclockwise around the circle, S-A-S. -S. But if you go clockwise, S-A-S. -S. Doesn't matter which direction you go, you still get side, angle, side. So side, angle, side. So if these match each other, then those two triangles are congruent. What we're gonna practice now, example number one, is to name the included angle. So the word included means the angle that is between the pair of sides. So first one we wanna know is between JK and KL. Well, it's right here at this angle K, but it's not just angle K because see how angle K is shared between two angles. So we have to use the three letters to name this angle. So I'm gonna go from J to K to L. So angle J, K, L. PK and LK. PK and LK, so it's this one right here. So that's gonna be LKP. Oops, LKP. LP and LK, so that's this one up here. So that's gonna be PLK. And finally, JL and JK. So that's gonna be this obtuse angle here. So it's gonna be KJL. Example number two. Decide whether there's enough information given to prove that the triangles are congruent using the SAS congruence theorem. So again, what is the minimum amount of information that you need in order to say that these two triangles are the same? So the minimum we are learning today, one minimum amount of information is SAS. So what we can do is we can match up their congruent pieces. So there's an S that matches. Here's another A that matches and another S that matches. So no matter what direction you go around the triangle, you can see S-A-S, S-A-S. So yes, there is enough information to say that these two triangles are congruent because it says decide whether there is enough um, yes, in this case there is by SAS. Let's check this one. So here's an S that matches, here's an S that matches, and another S that matches, and another S that matches. And there's actually one more angle pair that matches in this case. It's called vertical angles. So vertical angles match always, they're equal by the vertical angles postulate. But as we go around this triangle, we go S to S to A, and S to S to A, or if you go the other direction, A to S to S. So no, there is not enough information on this one because it is not using 
the SAS congruence theorem, this would be an SSA, which is not the correct order. So no, this does not have enough information. Use the given information to name two congruent triangles, explain your reasoning. So when we look at this guy, you can kind of take a guess as to which ones you think are congruent, um, just using your eyeballs. So it, t it looks to me like these two might be congruent and this one might not. It looks a little bit larger, but we can show it using the SAS triangle congruence theorem. So here's an S that matches between those two. Here's an A that matches between those two. And then there's one more side length that matches between them. This is what's called a shared side length. So I like to put a double tick mark on that one and then write my third S right on the shared side length. So I'm gonna kind of point to it and that's called a shared side. And anytime they share a side, it's going to be the same length. So I can see S-A-S, S-A-S. So triangle A-B-E is congruent to triangle CBE. Now, if we wanna compare that to this last one, this is a new shared side. So this is actually a three tick mark side between those two. EC is not the same length as BE. So that's why there's three tick marks here. So this triangle is not congruent to the others because their third side length do not match. So DEC is not congruent to the other two. Example number four, use the given information to name two congruent triangles, explain your reasoning. So it says P is the center of the circle. So if this is the very center of the circle, any line that you draw from the center out to the edge of the circle is going to be a radius. And what defines a circle is that all of its radiuses are the same length. So I can put a tick mark on all of those radius lengths to say that they're the same. So PN is a radius, PM is a radius, PL is a radius. So those three lengths are the same length, which means that all of these triangles have an S and an A and an S. And that means that all three of these triangles are congruent. So we'll go ahead and write all three, even though it only asks for two. So triangle, um, let's start with this one, LPN is congruent to NPM is congruent to the third triangle, MPL. All three triangles are congruent by SAS. All right, it says use the information given to f uh, find the values of X and Y. So we've got some markings here. We got markings going on so I can see that we have a matching S, we have a matching A, and we have another matching S. So what I can say about these two triangles is that they are in fact congruent, even though they didn't tell me that in the directions at all. I can say, yes, these triangles are congruent to each other. So triangle D, E, F is congruent to, and then this is a C here, D and C correspond. So we've got triangle C, A, uh, I should go to B for C, B, A. So now what we can do is we can match up their markings. So we can say that if this is 38, then angle C is 38. If angle F is missing, but angle F corresponds to angle A, and then angle B corresponds to angle E. I can also see that this length from D to C corresponds to this length from F to A, which is labeled six. So the first thing we can do is we could match up those lengths. So I know that DC is congruent to FA, which means that one half times four X minus 16 is equal to six. Don't miss that length of six. Uh, let's get rid of the one half by multiplying by two. Four X minus 16 equals 12. Add 16, four X equals 28. Divide by four and X equals seven. Now the next one that we wanna do is we wanna find the value of Y. It's in two different spots. It's in this measure of angle A and it's in the measure of angle uh, E here with this Y. But I also know the third angle. I know 38. 
So if we know three angles, we have knowledge that three angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. So what I can do is I can put angle A in its corresponding spot at angle F. So this is actually 2Y minus 26 right there at angle F. So now I have three angles, 2Y minus 26, 5Y and 38 make 180. So 38 plus 5y plus 2y minus 26 equals 180. 5y and 2y make 7y's. 38 minus 26 is 12 equals 180. Subtract 12 and we get 7y equals 168. Divide by 7 and you get y equals 24. Thank you.